In this video, I am going to discuss the keto and all tautomerism. So first of all, let's get familiar with all the terms. Tautomerism can be defined as a type of isomerism in which two constitutional isomers, say CI1 and CI2, exist in equilibrium with each other and the structures of these isomers are differentiated by the positions of a hydrogen atom and a double bond. Coming to the terms keto and enol, keto represents the compounds containing the carbonyl group such as aldehydes and ketones and enol is a combination of two terms in and all where in stands for a double bond like we see in alkenes and all stands for the alcohol functional group. That means that in an enol compound the same carbon will bear the double bond as well as the alcohol functional group. So in general we can represent the keto enol tautomerism as this is the keto form that I am drawing. And R1, R2 and R3 are the general alkyl groups. The enol form can be drawn as this is the keto form and this is our enol form. Notice that I have deliberately drawn an alpha hydrogen instead of generalizing it with an alkyl group because the presence of alpha hydrogen is necessary for tautomerism to happen. Let's take an example of acetone. The enol form in this case would look like and for cyclohexanone This will be our enol structure. Here we can see that I have just altered the positions of a hydrogen atom and a double bond for the structures. Let's come to the mechanism of interconversion from keto to enol. The interconversion can take place in both acidic as well as in basic medium. So first let's talk about the interconversion in basic medium or the base catalyzed interconversion. Here we make use of the fact that the hydrogen on the alpha carbon atom or the alpha hydrogen is slightly acidic in the keto compounds and when a base or the hydroxide anion removes a proton from this molecule the intermediate so formed is stabilized by resonance. So we will draw the appropriate structures to analyze how it happens. Let's take our keto substrate to be propanone and draw the alpha hydrogen separately. Now this hydroxide anion in the basic medium will remove a proton from this molecule and render it a negative charge. This will give rise to a carbonyl intermediate and this intermediate is stabilized by resonance in this way. The second resonating structure looks like this. 
and we can see that the second resonating structure is more stable of the two. It is because the negative charge is carried by a more electronegative atom, that is oxygen. And this oxygen is now electron rich. So it can fetch a proton from the water molecule. And in the last step, we will get our enol product for the keto substrate we started with. Here we can take a note that the reaction involved a carbon ion as intermediate, the stability of which depends on the acidic strength of the alpha hydrogen. That means higher the stability of this alpha hydrogen or I should say higher the acidity of this alpha hydrogen higher is the stability of this carbon ion and higher is the chance that this will be involved as an intermediate in the interconversion. Let's move on to the acid catalyzed interconversion. Here the mechanism is exact reverse of the one we saw in basic medium. In that case, first the alpha hydrogen was removed and then the oxygen atom supplied electrons to the hydrogen atom and we got our enol product. In this mechanism, first the oxygen atom fetches a proton from the given acidic medium. Let's see how it happens. We are taking the same substrate. and the oxygen donates its lone pair to the proton to give rise to this positively charged intermediate which is again resonance stabilized. This will be the second resonating structure. with the positive charge on carbon atom. Now this alpha hydrogen is ready to leave the molecule and we will get a double bond. Hence the enol structure. So this is all about acid catalyzed interconversion. Going through both the mechanisms we can infer that for a compound to show tautomerism it should have two characteristics. First is it should have electron withdrawing group such as carbonyl, nitro or cyanide. And the second requirement is that the compound must have a hydrogen atom at the alpha position or it should have alpha hydrogens the presence of which was paramount in both the mechanisms. Now, if we want to analyze the relative stabilities of the two isomers, we have to take a closer look at their structural differences. So, comparison between the stabilities of keto and enol. Let's go back to the case of acetone and analyze the structural differences and compare the enthalpies of bonds involved in both the structures that is the structures of keto and enol. So the keto structure is I'm deliberately drawing the open structure and this will be the enol form as we have seen. Here we can see that the CS3 part is common in both the forms. And two of the three CH bonds are also common. CH single bonds I mean. And the bonds that are uncommon in both the compounds can be listed as 
for keto we have C single bond C and C double bond O and C single bond H and for enol we have C double bond C C single bond O and O single bond H and the enthalpies of all the bonds when expressed in kilojoule per mole come out to be let me just write down actually it's 347 kilojoule per mole and for double bond we have 598 kilojoule per mole for C double bond O we have 799 and C double bond O 358 for C single bond H we have 411 and O double bond H is 459 so total for keto is 1557 and total for enol is 1415 so keto form is more stable than enol form by a margin of 142 kilojoule per mole in case of acetone and that means it should dominate the equilibrium mixture which is indeed the case in practical situations it is determined that keto form makes up for more than 99.9 percent .9 of the equilibrium mixture and the enol form accounts for less than 0.1 percent that means unless an enol compound offers some special structural features the keto form will always dominate if you found this tutorial to be helpful please like subscribe and share and thanks for watching